Hi. Oh my gosh, look at my flyaway. It's just like sticking straight out. That's fine. <laughs> Hi. Hello. Happy Wednesday. How's everybody's day going so far? I've had a great day. My day is actually starting a little bit later than a normal Wednesday. Um, so I got to kind of have a more mellow of a morning, got some work done in the morning, some client calls, got a workout in, had some lunch, and now we're here. And then we're gonna continue on the rest of the day. So I hope that this time is still convenient for at least some of you because, um, you know, usually I do it in the evening, but I also like to try to mix it up in case evening time doesn't really work for very many people. So actually, I would love to know what time you normally watch the lives or what time would be most convenient for you to catch the lives. Do you prefer the evening? Do you prefer morning? Do you prefer midday? So drop a comment. Let me know what time would be most beneficial or easiest for you to catch live. And if you're not watching it live, you're catching the replay, then that's totally cool too because you can watch that anytime you want. So anyway, the question, let's get right down to it. The discussion question from yesterday was, and I quote, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word metabolism? And we actually got a ton of great answers. So I'm just going to read them off really quickly before I jump into the training on what metabolism is, maybe what you're doing to slow down your metabolism and how to improve it or speed up your metabolism. So we've got people, people commented all sorts of stuff. So I'm just going to ramble them off. Muscle, weight loss, fat burning, chemical reactions, keep it fast and not slow, how fast you can burn calories, that you can't impact your basal metabolic rate, BMR, nearly as quickly as you can impact NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So lifting weights for long-term goals slash general health and get off your butt throughout the day for intermediate goals and long-term success in weight loss. That was a lot. So thank you so much for putting all that down. And thanks for everybody else who had thoughts that you shared that kind of speed round of what is the first thing you think of when you hear the word metabolism. So let's break it down. Metabolism refers to, just like somebody in the comments said, chemical reactions. It's basically all of the chemical reactions that keeps your body alive and thriving and doing all the things that it needs to do. So how efficiently your metabolism can perform all of the tasks and duties that it needs to do to keep us alive, right? So when we think about metabolism, another kind of simplified way to think about it is, is your body it burning calories at rest. And if you have a fast metabolism, then your body is burning a lot of calories at rest, relative to your body size and age and composition, all that stuff, um, compared to a slower metabolism where maybe your body is not burning calories as efficiently or as much as it could. So, you know, there it's very scientific. There are so many intricacies when we're talking about metabolism and how your body um, metabolizes food and different things, but we, for the purposes of this, we're going to keep it pretty basic and surface level because honestly, it doesn't help. Uh, for, uh, sometimes it can help to really get down into the nitty gritty and you can let me know if you want to talk more specifically about some of the science behind it, but I find that it is super helpful to keep it at a level that we can like apply to our real life and actually be able to comprehend and practical application things to do. Because it's kind of like, yes, we've got all the, the scientific intricacies, but then it's like, we want to zoom out and figure out how to put it in a way that it can actually benefit us instead of just all of the scientific jargon. So we're going to keep it realistic and actionable for you. 
So let's first start with what slows down your metabolism or what you're doing that might be slowing your metabolism. So if we think about something that you can't really control, that's going to be the aging process. And it's just a matter of fact that as you age, your metabolism slows down. That's just part of it. So that's one of those kind of like, mm, can't really do anything about it. But let's talk about some of the things that maybe you are doing or that we can identify as being contributing to a slower metabolism or you know, not allowing your metabolism to be firing as high and efficiently as it wants to. So number one, I'm gonna say is gonna be lack of sleep. So the sleep, and I'm sure you guys might be sick of hearing me talk about sleep, because yes, this is about, you know, we we talk a lot and focus a lot about nutrition in this group, but nutrition is just one piece of the puzzle when it comes to having optimal health, reaching your goals, right? We've got nutrition, exercise, sleep, stress management, um, mental health, like all these other things, right? So I absolutely am a firm believer that we need to prioritize sleep. And and not just because I think so, but because, um, you know, it's, it is such a critical part to ensuring a functional and efficient metabolism. Basically, when you are awake during the day, your resources are your body's resources are going to doing all the things you're asking it to do while it's alive. Thinking, moving, um, digesting food, whatever it is, that takes precedent, that takes priority. And then at sleeping, during sleeping, at sleeping, <laughs> during sleep is when your body can actually do all of those super critical functions that basically it doesn't have the time or energy to prioritize while you're awake. So things like um, building muscle, metabolizing fat, regenerating brain cells, producing hormones, like all of these super critical things happen while you sleep. And if you do not get enough sleep, then your metabolism will suffer and your metabolism will slow down. So in a society that's super busy, like we're going go, go, go all the time, sleep oftentimes gets pushed to the wayside, right? Like I, I hear so many people like, not not bragging, but it's kind of like, oh yeah, I only got five hours of sleep last night. It's like, we don't want to be bragging about that. Let's stop normalizing that that's okay. Because in reality, you want to be shooting for a, a bare minimum of seven hours of quality sleep a night. If you can get between seven and nine, that is optimal for most adults to have, you know, that, that time to dedicate to doing all the things your body needs to do and improving your metabolism. So, seven to nine hours of sleep a night. So something else that you're doing or maybe did or know people that are doing that slows down your metabolism is doing overly restrictive diets. Being in a restrictive, highly caloric, an extreme caloric deficit for an extended period of time. Our bodies are super adaptive. Like we are going to stay alive at all costs. But what that means is that our metabolism adapts to its new baseline. So if it thinks that its new baseline is a thousand calories because you're doing whatever super restrictive diet to just, you know, have so, so few calories, after a certain period of time, your metabolism will adapt to that and keep you alive, even though it might not be your technical or theoretical uh, maintenance calories, your metabolism adapts to its new baseline to maintain and stay alive at these new calories. So um, it's, it's really counterproductive if you're trying to lose weight 
if you force your body to adapt to a super restrictive caloric deficit for an extended period of time, and that's damaging your metabolism. It's making your metabolism adapt to these new fewer calories, okay? Along those same lines, skipping meals or going too long fasted. So I know that intermittent fasting is like super hypey. It's like a fad right now, super trendy. But I will say, and I did a video on it, you can look back. If you don't already know, um, I have all of these live video trainings all organized nicely in the guides section. So if you're new and we have a ton of new people, so welcome, super glad you're here. If you do not know, head over to the guide section and then we have them all categorized. So you can go through and look at the library of all of these live videos that I've done for the past year and four months because I started this group last January. So you can go through and watch all of those videos. There are so, so many, and I think you'd find that really valuable. But I, I brought that up to say I have a video on intermittent fasting. So if you have questions about intermittent fasting, go watch that video, and it'll tie into why I'm here saying that it, you know, extended fasting and skipping meals is actually not improving your metabolism. It's suppressing it and making it slow down. And just like we were talking about before with the extreme caloric deficit, it's adapting to not having fuel enough throughout the day, okay? So you know, there's not enough research to support uh, intermittent fasting as a superior method of weight loss or improved health benefits. That's kind of like the the short version of what we talked about in the intermittent fasting video. So another thing that can be contributing to your lower or to contributing to lower a metabolism is going to be dehydration because if your body's not hydrated, it's not going to be able to carry out all these functions and processes optimally. And so, I, you know, we have people living all over the place, but it is starting to heat up. It's May, starting to be those summer months. Even when you don't feel thirsty, like maybe in the winter time, you still need to be hydrated. And when you start feeling thirsty, I'm sure you've heard this a million times, when you start feeling thirsty, that means your body's already dehydrated. So we want to stay ahead of it. We want to prioritize hydration because that helps your metabolism stay efficient and stay burning calories as you know much as it wants to and can. And then also chronic stress. So chronic stress feeds into chronic inflammation. So cortisol is your stress hormone. And if you are under a lot of stress for a, an extended period of time, your cortisol levels are going to be consistently high. And so what that means is that this high cortisol is very damaging to your metabolism because it had, it is in, inflaming, making your body inflamed but it not in the good way. We're gonna talk about inflammation in a couple weeks, and so we'll dive deeper into that, but acute inflammation is good, chronic inflammation is damaging. So we definitely want to try to manage your stress levels as much as possible and figure out what it is that will help you feel at you know, those stress-reducing activities and what you enjoy might be different than what somebody else enjoys, and that's okay. Just figure out what it is that you enjoy and make time for it regularly. So those are all, last week I had my, um, I think I had the cranberry hibiscus tea and this week I have a peach ginger, it's super good. So that's kind of the column of what is slowing your metabolism or damaging your metabolism. Now let's talk about what you can do to improve your metabolism and to increase your metabolism because there are plenty of things that you can control. Like we said, aging, you can't really control that, but you can control a lot of aspects to help improve your metabolism. And the 
number one most important one that I would I would say is like really critical is weight training. So improving your metabolism is directly related to increasing your muscle mass. So muscle or lean tissue, lean muscle tissue is what I like to call metabolically expensive, meaning it requires more calories to maintain at rest than fat. So basically what that means is if you have more muscle, you need more calories to maintain it than if you have less muscle, which means you have to eat less to maintain that. Does that make sense? So as you increase your muscle mass, your metabolism is just going going higher and hotter and requiring more just to exist. So that is, I would say, the number one way to improve and increase your metabolism. You can start right away. You can start with body weight. You can start with resistance. You can start with weights in the gym, whatever you want. But I will say that, keep that in mind, muscle improves your metabolism. And that's huge. So kind of piggybacking off of that, we need to make sure you're eating enough protein to support that muscle tissue. So if you're not getting enough protein, this can absolutely um, decrease your metabolism because you're not maintaining that muscle mass. So to improve your metabolism, we need weight training. We need to make sure you're meeting your protein requirements, and that's something I can help with. And then also, we need to make sure that you're actually giving your body enough calories to sustain itself. So when we were talking about what slows down your metabolism, not eating enough or being on too big of a caloric deficit for too long, conversely, what improves your metabolism is by giving your body the fuel that it needs. And when your body feels safe and like taken care of, it's not in danger, then it's going to help you lose body fat because body fat is stored energy. It's basically, okay, here's some energy for later in case I need it. And if your body is used to and adapted to a severe caloric deficit, like we were talking about before, uh, your body's like, uh, I need this, I need this extra energy. I'm only getting a thousand calories a day. I don't know when the heck she's gonna give me enough. So I, just in case, so I don't die or starve to death, I'm gonna hang on to this extra energy, AKA stored fat. So as you give your body enough nutrition to support its needs and its metabolism, it helps to improve your body composition and your metabolism. Your metabolism can, can increase and, and be more efficient when it feels safe and taken care of by getting enough fuel in by your, through your diet, okay? So kind of along those same lines, we wanna talk about nutrient timing. Basically, not skipping meals. <laughs> so we had talked about that at the um, on the other side when we were talking about what in, decreases your metabolism. So by giving your body enough fuel, but regularly, that to help increase your metabolism by having that muscle protein synthesis being consistent throughout the day, which it's a process that really only takes a couple hours. So if you skip meals, then you're not optimizing that metabolic process. So not only to help you not feel hungry, uh, but also to improve your metabolism, we want to make sure you're not skipping meals and having your nutrition timed consistently throughout the day. And that's something I work on with my clients too. So if you need help, let me know and we can talk about it. Okay, so... Now, we talked about enough food, we talked about enough protein, we talked about spreading it evenly throughout the day or specific nutrient timing. So let's go and talk about a few specific foods that can help improve your metabolism. Now, I want to be very clear that these two foods are not going to be like magical fat burning in metabolic increasing Foods. No, it's very small percentages that it can help improve, increase your metabolism while it metabolizes those specific foods. 
the best way is to increase your muscle mass because at rest, that's how you can burn more calories at rest, improving your metabolism. Caffeine and spicy foods can improve your metabolism at a very small percentage. So um, it's like one of those little tweaks that you can incorporate, not expecting it to be like more important than getting your fueling and your muscle, um, you know, improvements down. Okay. So let's be very clear about that. Yes, caffeine and spicy foods can help to improve your metabolism, but not as much as some other things. And so let's kind of talk about some of those other things that are super critical that you want to make a priority in order to have as best functioning a metabolism as you possibly can. That's going to be drinking enough water. Like we were talking about before, being dehydrated can hurt your metabolism. Being adequately hydrated improves your metabolism because water is super critical for so many metabolic processes, like I was talking about before, that if you don't get enough, your body has to take shortcuts. And if it's taking shortcuts, it's not going to be performing optimally, okay? So getting enough water in, especially now that it's heating up, super critical. Now, the last one that we already kind of talked about on the other side is the sleep. So getting enough sleep is so, so important in order to make sure that your body has the time and the resources to dedicate to doing all the things it can't do while you're awake, okay? So we have a nice long list on both sides, how to slow down your metabolism and how to improve your metabolism. So that being said, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed because here's the thing, a lot of them are kind of these bigger concepts that require daily action, daily attention, in order to form it into a habit. Improving your metabolism is not something you can just do overnight, right? Like as much as we want to be able to take a, you know, magic pill, improve your metabolism, mm, long-term, not gonna happen. You know, so that's why we want to put the attention and put the intention to your daily habits that help improve your metabolism, okay? Build muscle. Eat enough, fuel your body, have nutrient timing that match your lifestyle and goals, get enough protein, get enough sleep. Maybe caffeine and spicy foods can help, okay? Now, on the other side, you can kind of think of the opposite as those things that hurt your metabolism. One thing that we cannot control is aging, not yet at least. Um, so I hope that this was helpful. I would love to hear from you. Comment below what your biggest takeaway and maybe one thing that you want to start doing right now to start improving your metabolism. What is something that you can work on? How can you make action today to start working on that daily regular habit to improve your metabolism over the long term? Let me know. I want to hear it. Okay, I'm going to let you go. I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday and I will see you later in the group.